All right, guys, today we are going to move on to lesson five, identifying information from a printed communication. And again, these are the learning objectives. You need to be able to read and understand the different types of printed communications. Examples are mammals, printed announcements, and these announcements may have images where you have to be able to extract information from. Um, or classified at, so those can also be used as printed communications on teeth test. Next, you need to be able to locate relevant information. So basically you can understand the information and also identify the details um, that can help you answer a specific question. Last, recognize different parts of a printed communication. So you can see these are you know, very, very similar, right? Um, if you can recognize the different parts, then that means you understand the information and you can locate a specific piece of information. Common questions are, what is the main point of this memo? And, and you're gonna see questions on specific details from the printed communication, right? So here is a uh, announcement that's for university employees. So pause the video now, read through this announcement and answer the questions. So I have multiple questions, but since the announcement is a little bit long, so there's only one question on each slide. Okay, now let's look at questions. So you can see that this uh, public announcement is about the active shooter preparedness training, right? So this is for all Victory University employees, right? So the first part is really just about, you know, why we're doing this training session. And the second part has some details about the training session. Like the first sessions are going to be in person on November 19th and November 20th. And the location is going to be the main campus, right? So when you read this, you can probably infer that this university may have multiple campuses, right? So that's why the announcement specifically says that the first in-person sessions are going to be on the main campus. And then immediately after that, it mentions that the trainings will be offered to other campuses, right? As the training plan rolls out during the next academic year. So this means for other campuses, they're not going to have the training sessions available at this time, but the training sessions will be available next year. And people need to register to attend the training sessions and slots are uh, limited, right? Uh, to provide a space for social distancing. Now this um, uh, public announcement is written very recently. So we're still in the midst of a pandemic. So that's why social distancing is mentioned. And then you can see um, even more details about each session, right? Uh, such as time and specific location. Okay. There you go. And there is a note at the end. It says, if you're a member of the leadership council, then this training will be provided as part of the regularly scheduled November 30th meeting. So that means people who are on this leadership council do not have to attend the regular sessions, right? Which happens on November 19th and November 20th. So they can just go to the November 30th meeting and the training will be provided at that meeting. Okay, now question one, what is the main point of this memo? So let's, let's start with a B. Employees of the university are encouraged to properly social distance at training. Now this information is mentioned in the announcement, but is this the main point of the memo? No, it's just a very small detail to ensure people that you know, social distancing will be available at the training sessions. So you, you don't have to worry about you know, COVID safety. C, the leadership council do not need to attend these two training sessions. And that's also a correct statement. But again, is this the main idea of the memo? No, it's just a side note. Last one, an active shooter situation is possible at the university campus and everyone should be prepared. So even though, again, this is a correct statement, but that's not what the announcement is about. So the announcement has some information at the beginning, like um, I showed over here, to kind of tell the employees why these training sessions will be important, right, for them to attend to, because then they can be prepared if something bad happens. 
but again, this is not the main idea. This is not the main purpose for having this announcement, right? The main point is that employees are encouraged to attend these training sessions, and then they can find all the information needed from this public announcement. So D is actually just a supporting detail, right? As a rationale for why we're offering the training sessions and why you should attend these training sessions. Okay. So A is the correct answer. Okay, next question. Please pause your video now. Okay, question two. What audience are these two training sessions intended for? So you can see that this memo is addressed to all in university employees, right? So that includes all the faculty and staff members and all the administrators. But remember, there is a note, right? For people who are on the leadership council, they have the training um, as part of their regularly scheduled November 30th meeting. So they do not have to attend these two regular training sessions. So the correct answer is B, all faculty, staff, and administrators. So that's all the employees, right? Except those, those who are on the leadership council. Now, students are not university employees, not usually. So students is not the correct answer, right? So not A or C. How about D, all police and security officers? Now, these are university employees, but the training sessions are not just for them, right? The training sessions are really for um, all the employees at the university, except those who are members of the leadership council. Okay, so again, D is the correct answer. Question three, pause the video now. What can you infer about the Victory University from this memo? All right, now let's go over all of the answer choices. A, only the science and technology building has an auditorium for events such as training mentioned in the memo. Now, the, the announcement, the memo does mention that the second session will be held at the auditorium in the science and technology building. But this doesn't mean that there is only one auditorium in the university that's available for bigger events, right? So that's not true. B, university employees all work at the main campus. That's not true. We talk about this, um, it looks like there are other campuses, right? So main campus is not the only campus. C, the university does not think an active shooting would happen at its campus. Now, um, the memo mentions that such situation would be a worst case scenario. This implies that the university believes that such situation may happen, right? There is always a, a possibility, even though the, the, the possibility is probably low, um, but it could happen and that would be the worst case scenario, right? So C is not correct. D, employees from other campuses can wait until the next year to attend the training. And that's correct because for other campuses, the training plan will roll out during the next academic year. All right, that's it. Hopefully this video allows you to practice more with the reading section of the key. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time.